Welcome into another edition of Spits and Suds. I'm Gavin Spittle of 105.3 The Fan. I'm joined by two-time NCAA champion, two-time Stanley Cup champion, 17 years in the league, a long time with your Dallas Stars, big part of Saturday night, Craig Ludwig. I wish we could, I should just press record when we first connect because the conversations we have off, I think would be fascinating to many. Yeah, people really need to know how much smoke you blow. I don't blow smoke at all. You, you talk like you're the Jamie Dimon of the uh, the radio I'm world. just saying. It would be nice if you... I told you, we've known each other for 20 years. It would be nice if every once in a while, you just put a little air in my tires. I'll put it in there with a, with a pick, an ice pick. <laughs> God. All right. Take us through the activities of Saturday. First off, were you there when the rain was hitting, or did you get enough notice that you could just take your time get into the arena? No, no, of course I was there. I'm I'm not late for anything. I'm anally early for everything. And I even made a call a few days earlier and said, what happens if it rains? Oh, we'll be okay. Oh, okay, well, I don't know if you, I mean, you guys heard of that weather app on your phones, you know, you can look at and see that it's 80% monsoon um anyway got out of the car kim and i go down the escalator start talking to a few fans at the bottom of the parking garage guy walks up and said did you hear everything's been canceled i was like what yeah they canceled everything wow so what does craig ludwig do for the rest of the day went to the heroes bar oh nice that's a good yeah one. well i mean what what you know so the so the thing from, we were supposed to be there at three, you know, and, and usually that's just, they want you there early. And then it was going to start at four. And then at five, there was going to be a reception. Um, anyway, um, ultimately we, we still got into a place down in at the bottom of AAC there. Um, and then, uh, you know, some guys came in and some, there were a few fans in there, but went into the hero bar for, I don't know, hour, hour and a half. And then went into the, other bar inside the arena. And then um, they had told us it was going to be on the jumbotron. Um, so, but I think all in all, it was a, it was a great event for Mo. It was. Um, he seemed to be very, very, very pleased with everything that went down. So yeah, um, that, that's all that really matters. You know, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting, Craig, because I wonder if, and you would know as someone who has spent many years with him, I wonder if Mother Nature forcing it inside and then him hearing the roar of 17,000 people might have added to that emotion. Well, a bird can fly by and he's going to start crying. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah, he's a little bitch. Oh, my so, God, Craig Ludwig. <clears throat> no. Well, Mo's an immers- emotional, you know, human being. So, um, and God bless him. You know, that's just, he's not your normal superstar. Why I've said that for years. Like that? You should be like um, that a little bit more. You know, it, but it, what, what it is, is it just shows you how important his family is to him and, you know, and, and friends and, and all that stuff. And he, he was, you know, and even Allie, Allie couldn't keep it together, his wife, and which, which is normal. But, you know, she's got the anatomy to be able to cry once in a while. Most <laughs> supposed to keep it in. But, um. That's what you love about Mo. You know, the one thing I can say about him, not one thing, there are a lot of things I could say about Mike, but when you have that kind of status, your entire career, spending the majority of it here in a great city of Dallas and being the golden child and the face of the organization and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, when, you know, just like Dirk and, Emmett and Troy and all those other guys in Dallas, they, the fans love their superstars. Mo has never, have you ever heard one negative thing about Mike off the ice? No, never, nothing. I don't know. Some of us are like, how the hell do you do that? But you know, he just, he, he lives the right way when he, when he was an athlete, he's still an athlete, but I mean, when he played, um, he did the right things away from the rink. Uh, he does the right things with his family, you know, and every, anytime I talk to him and, you know, well, what's going on, you know, how's the tribe and, you know, one kid and then three kids and five kids. And 
Oh, Jesus doing this, going in here, going here. You know what I mean? He's just, he's just dad all the time. Yeah. So, um, you know, and then he's jumping on a plane to go do an autograph thing or what, you know, all that kind of stuff that comes along with ter- territory with those guys. So, um, you know, he's a family guy, but I, I just, you know, again, we, we ran in different circles when we played together, obviously, but you couldn't even drag him into any of the bad stuff. You know, it was just like the little, he's got that little smirk to his and it was like, nah, I'm good. You guys go, you know, go, you know, and, and I, I've said for so many, so many years, I just like to have one night that you look like Madonna and you are Madonna. Just give me one night, <laughs> you know, but he, no doubt. you know, he, he's like, a, you know, and he'll, he would disagree with it, but <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. No, that's or it's a- role model, you know? Yeah, no, I understand. So there was a moment in the game that also drew a large pop from the American Airlines Center crowd. They showed on the Jumbotron, Joe Neuendike, Yuri Lettinen, Brendan Morrow. Where was Craig Ludwig? I was right, right to the left of them, a little in the back by the beer. Why didn't you want to just go on screen? Oh, God. No. No, not my thing. Those guys, trust me, those guys don't want to come on screen either. You know, I don't, they probably didn't know. Or was that, did they line up for that one? Yeah, they lined up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. (laughs) They can have their 15 seconds of fame. I'm, I, you know, I'm there all the time. Unfortunately, we don't see Nui a ton. Brendan's, you know, busy doing his stuff. Let's was in Finland half the time. So, um, you know, it's good for the fans to, to get to see those guys and, you know, what they're doing and they all look great and live in happy lives. Yeah. Tell me about the personality of Yuri Lettinen and how you guys got along through the years. <laughs> this is a okay. pullback. When you say, podcast. well, when you say personality, yeah, let's looks at you and nods your nods his head with <laughs> an affirmation. <laughs> I mean, that, let's doesn't talk a lot. I mean, I, in, as a matter of fact, there, there are times when, you know, he'll have a couple of beers and then, then he will be a little bit more chatty and it gets about five or six words. In and I'm like, just speak Finnish. I, I can understand you better if you speak Finnish and I don't even know one word of Finnish. So, um, he, he's, he's just another guy that flies under the radar, wants no attention. Um, he was the perfect compliment for everybody. To be honest with you, I mean, he played on a line with with Brett Hull and Mike Bonanno, and in his job was to f- fix everything. And when those guys, you know, kind of strayed away from certain parts of the ice, there was Let's picking up the pieces and you know filling in the holes. And when the third line, who would ever be on the third line or the second line, when that line wasn't going well, we'll move Let's to that line. One period later, they were the best line on the ice. So mm-hmm. that. Kari was the fixer, you know, or Kari. Yuri was the, the fixer. Um, he he just he did so many things in the game the right way. Um, you know, and he's obviously known for the defensive side of things, but always scoring 20 to 25 goals a year. And and you always find him with the you know the best players. And then sometimes, you know, when when another line wasn't working, he'd go there. So, but he's a quiet guy. And, but he's a hockey guy. You know, I know he's done a lot of things with Finland and Finnish hockey and stuff like that. And, um, but he's, he's a guy, he, he reminds me a bit of Bob Gainey. Uh, you know, Bo is a little bit more 24 seven when it comes to hockey. In other words, it's never turned off where Yuri's Yuri's, you know, Yuri can go out and have a, a, you know, once in a while, have a good time with the guys and stuff like that. Not that Bob doesn't, but Bob is just never really turned changes and gets out of hockey mode um like you wouldn't think he does i should say but um you know he's very reserved uh, car just uh, why do i keep saying Kari? i think we, we we played last night and i i was talking about Kari. get Kari out to play with you know get in the net once in a while with us he plays in our other games i think that's why i got Kari on the mind because his he, gear is sitting right net? next to me in our alumni room did he play and i always got to move it um <clears throat> so but no, Yuri's Yuri, Yuri was just the perfect athlete, the perfect teammate. Um, you know, so yeah, the, and you know, it's hard to say the guys that you mentioned. Yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned Brendan's name. So 
you know, Brendan doesn't hasn't and he, you know, he's got a thing that he's doing with a golf course and things like that. And um, and some property and golfers and all this kind of stuff. So we don't, Brendan's not around to skate a lot with us. You know, we, we, the guys get together and we skate besides Fridays, you know, we skate a couple other times a week, once in the afternoon, you know, Tuesday, Thursdays, whatever it may be. So, so Minnie says he's coming out with us uh, yesterday and we skated uh, yesterday at six fifteen, and uh, we skated six fifteen to eight thirty. So it was a long one last night. But anyway, I get a text message at 612 yesterday morning. And it says, what the fuck did I get punked? And I'm looking at it. <laughs> and th- this came from from Saturday night when and he said, hey, you know, I can't come Sunday, but I'll, I'll be there. I, I think I can make Monday. I said, cool. Anyway, him and Turco. His buddy are at the rink in Farmer's Branch in the locker room at <laughs> 6 12 a.m. <laughs> yesterday morning, waiting for our 6 15 p.m. skate yesterday. And he thought he was getting set up. So, uh, but he did make it last night. I didn't think he'd come back, but he came back. He was, he got there about 10 15 minutes after we started skating. But, um, you know, but Brendan, Brendan again, kind of, just kind of folds into the kind of captains that Dallas stars have had, yeah. you know, heavier plays, grindy, gritty, uh, you know, the guy that carries the flag and takes it in, you know, the first guy running into battle. Okay. So after the statue was unveiled, I put out the tweet. Where should we put my spits and suds partner, Craig Ludwig statue? No wrong answers. And well, right outside, right outside the, the sweet little runway there. You walk out into the concourse. Yep. And if you turn right and you go about 30 or 40 feet is where the toilet is. <laughs> and you put it just inside that door. Right over by the paper towel machines. No, no. The following replies. Uh, at Cowboy Jeff Sucks, I think Craig would appreciate it if you put a Pantera shirt on the statue. At Fuzzy Wuzzy Boom Boom at the bar, LMAO, uh, Matt Day. A statue should be of him on a bar stool in one of the arena bars. Uh, at 12 <laughs> I like that. Vader. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Matt's a Matt's amazing. He's been to over 1,000 games. Uh, Chris says, penalty box, make a reusable sticker and move it with the team to intimidate others. Uh, at M. Grant 802, Modelo Bar. Uh, let's see. Court says definitely his favorite bar. Craig at Craig TX 80 at the big apple cafe for some post road game beers. Now uh, there's already one there though. Joe's still got the Stanley cup picture up there and, yeah. and it's the home of, of Craig Ludwig when you walk in the door. So nice. Joe, the, the owner. So, uh, at Jimmy P posted a, <laughs> a old stars picture of you, a headshot and said, come at me, bro. <laughs> at bun girl says about 10 feet behind mo and it should be him on a lawn chair cracking open a frosty with his feet up on a cooler i like that why 10 feet behind mo <laughs> oh you guy. mean at the arena yeah yeah i think that would oh, be- outside oh yeah. yeah well that's a stretch you know that would that would kind of put you right at the bar inside of heroes yeah yeah pretty good oh well that i agree with that one then yep uh, okay, uh, Radica Vegan says right outside of Strokers, Dallas. That's uh, not a bad idea. No, Rick- that's a pretty good one. Uh, uh, at Hello, It's Me, Matt says the bathroom at Milo's. I don't, did you ever hit Milo's? I don't think you did. I don't, uh, I don't, don't even that's know not, what Milo's yeah, that's is. That's not your part honest. of town, yeah. Uh, let's see. Ricky Garza says, but I'm not, but I'm not opposed to going and finding out what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Ricky Garza says at the clubhouse, a good one. (laughs) And we're we're not talking tour 18, right? (laughs) No, I don't think we're talking tour 18 and we don't want to get into what the statue would look like. (laughs) (laughs) I know you'd be on a chair, but I don't want, we'll just leave it at that. (laughs) There, there'd be some, uh, 
incidentals hanging from it. <laughs> yes, there certainly, there certainly would. Uh, at GHS Prom King, next to whichever bar in the AAC never runs out of beer. Hey, you know what? That's a shot at me, I think. Um, and that's a good one, Prom King. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Hanging off the railing of a pool patio. Um, and James Fasello, a nice little cherry on top in front of Madonna's statue to look like he had passed Mo the puck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mo, Mo would disagree with that. I, that, that would be, that would be Zubov passing the pucks to Mo. Yeah. Yeah. But I did yeah. want to ask you, I was thinking about this because of his speed. Um, and, and you played with some guys in Montreal that obviously, you know, each place you landed, you know, had guys with speed. As a defenseman, is there any kind of adjustment that you have to make for the player anticipating where they're going to be? So does that take repetition in practice? Yeah, but I, it doesn't always translate, especially for me to game, because remember in games there's five other guys in different yeah. jerseys out there. <laughs> so, um, you know, that th- those putting pucks where you anticipate Mo to be was more like Sergei Zubov kind of stuff, you know, that could throw that saucer and and it would land at the right spot when Mike was cutting across the middle of the ice, whereas you're getting a pass from me. It's probably, you got to, probably ought to have a full cage on because it's probably coming off the glass <laughs> high and hard. But, um, you know, when Mo was on the ice, as far as I was concerned, regardless if he was 10 feet or one foot, the puck <laughs> would beat him right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Quite the, uh, it was, it was pretty amazing. Statue came out great and, uh, it's awesome. Great that he talked about Dirk as well. Um, so really, 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 uh, it was a, it, it was a great nice. You just brought up like stars captain and it did get me thinking because Jamie's got one year left on his deal as far as who would be the next. TBD. You cut out when you said Jamie's got one year deal. So Jamie has a one year deal. And, you know, if they resign him, obviously he'll remain the captain at a lower rate. But yeah. if, if something did move on, I was just looking at some of the youngsters and saying, who would wear that next C? Oh, I, I don't think there's a doubt. You think there's a doubt? Who who would you who do you think? Uh I'm interested because I'm not in the room to know the characters, but the question is is Miro leads on the ice, is that what teams now desire as far as the C? So in I that think, case, I, think I would that's say that's kind of a, a different I think there's different philosophies for what your organization and what your general managers, your head coaches consider that. And, but, you know, when, when you think about the captains for this organization, Darian Hatcher was not a rah-rah guy. Darian wasn't, didn't chat a lot. Um, you know, he did what he did. And when, when he did, you're like, yep, our captains here. And did that not set the mold for the next couple guys? Yeah. Mo was the only one that had a little stint there that was different in style wise. And and I think at the time, I, I don't even know. I mean, I don't know if Mike would ever be again, he doesn't say anything bad about anything. <clears throat> so did Mike really want the C or did he just want to be left alone and just let me do what I do? You know, some guys are better doing that. And, and to get it and then, you know, then it's not there. And, but who do they give it to? They give it to a good buddy of his and Brendan Morrow. Brendan Morrow kind of falls into the same mode as Darian Hatcher. Jamie Ben falls into the same mode as Brendan Morrow, you know? So, um, sometimes you just, you know, you got to sit and think, and that's why there's, you know, I think the smart organizations you, you'll see there's teams that go for a year, sometimes two years, and they don't have a captain. And, and that's because they have a, you know, they have a blueprint of what, what they want their leader to be and, and they don't rush to give it to somebody and this, you know, and two years later go, oh man, wish we'd have given it to this guy. Cause that makes the, the player, yeah you know, puts him in a bad spot. So, you know, I, 
I I lean more towards the Brendan Morrows, uh, the Hatchies, and guys like that because I think they have a way to impact the game um, in a different way than a than a goal scorer. And I think sometimes you have to have the right kind of personality too. And it's more about off the ice to be able to handle the interviews and always be the one that's got to go talk to the media, you know, and that's not Jamie's strength. We all know that. And there's going to be people out there. Well, Jamie's not very good. Well, they didn't, they don't put a C in a guy because he can, because he, you know, he can go work for, you know, the president and, and lead all the the meetings in, in the, in the room, whatever they call it. Um, but they're, they're guys that, go through the wall for their teammates. And then there's the odd time, you know, Bob Ganey was like the, the best cop, you know, and that's not taking anything away from anybody, but you know, and Bob Ganey wasn't even a talker, but when he said something, there was a purpose to it. And it was usually heated and loud, but that came very few and often uh, moments. But when he did, Everybody paid attention. And I'm talking guys like Guy Lafleur and Larry Robinson and Steve Shutt and a lot of the Bulls names. People won't even know who they are, but they were great players for the Montreal Canadiens. And, um, you know, so and so that's kind of the the captains that I've been around um, through my my hockey career. And I've really never been on a team that has a, a superstar. I mean, does it make sense for Wayne Gretzky to wear the C? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he was Mr. Hockey. I mean, you know, after Gordy. So, um, you know, and you, and you really want to have a guy that can have a conversation with the referees, you know, and be a little bit diplomatic and, uh, you know, try to get them on the, on your side if you can. So, Anyway, I, I I think it's an organizational thing. I think it's kind of I think that I sh- I think they should represent the identity of your team. That makes sense. That's a uh, that's a very good answer. Let's move to on ice on Saturday night. I thought they played a terrific game. Caught the Kings on a back to back where the Kings dominated Chicago the night before. But uh, you know, looking at the game, I think the Stars clearly gave them. I thought L.A. was off, but I think that you know the Stars did a, a wonderful job from the get-go. It, to me, Craig, it was a, a complete game. And I just look at the consistency of Wyatt Johnston in particular, and I'm like, game after game, this guy, like, it is absolutely a pleasure to watch him, and he just makes the players around him so much better. Yeah, you know, I mean, that game went sideways for L.A. when they put Riddick in the net. He he had a bad game, and bad. he's he's been a, an average goalie for. I a thought long they were going to pull him at least at three one. Yeah, yeah. I mean that he he was there were rebounds and there was a lot of stuff laying around, but you know who cares? Uh, as far as why it goes, it's just it's business as usual, isn't it? I mean, for a young kid, he has this disposition when he's when do you see a celebration from him? You, you know what I mean? Like very rarely, it's like yeah, I scored. You know, like, yeah, I did this. Yeah, I did that. Just very calm and cool. And I, uh, you know, and again, I know that's majority of him, but I keep and always will go back to, you know, that has something to do with living with Joe Pavelski. You know, that it just kind of rubs off. And, you know, don't get too high. Don't get too low. But he is a talent, you know, and he's got a wicked, wicked shot. He, if you, if you ever seen him off ice, Honestly, he's got a body like yours. <laughs> I mean, I, I shouldn't even do that because I don't mean to put Wyatt felt. down. That's not what I mean. He's got a svelte he, body. He is a very saying. slight kid, but he doesn't play that way, you know? And um, and it's not like he plays Jamie Ben style, but it doesn't bother him the way he plays. He goes into areas and comes out of areas and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, he he's he's a talent and, and he's going to, he, I just, I think there's, he's going to get real close to 40 to 50 goals at some point, you know, yeah. in his career. And he's going to get a little bigger and stronger and he's just going to get better and better. But, um, he has a knack to score and it's that shot. So he's a good player. Yeah. Jim Neal has some decisions to make, obviously, as far as free agents. And that's a July conversation, Craig, but I bring it up because. Wyatt Johnston's in the last year of his contract becoming a restricted free agent. Thomas Harley's a restricted free agent this year. So that, to me, both both players are, I think, at least in the 6 to $7 million range. 
Yeah. Yeah. Thomas, there's a no brainer for you. Um, you know, it will be interesting to see what his camp does, you know, because I mean, it's the job of the, the GM to not, not give the farm away. And, you know, does he, does he want to take that long-term deal or does he want to take a three to five year deal and say, listen, I'll bet on myself kind of thing. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think as a GM, you'd want to go that route because what he, what we're seeing him do now is probably just scratching the surface with him. Um, I, I say all the time, wouldn't it be great if he was right-handed? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Only, only because it puts Miro back on his left side, you know? Um, but if you're sitting there as a general manager and, you know, I, you know, and Tanov is going to be here for who knows, you know, whether he signs another deal or whatever, but I think him and Essa seem to have a good, good relationship in a short period of time. Um, but a Haskin and Harley pair just makes sense moving forward. Um, you know, to keep those two together and, and let them grow to get to know each other. And like we, we talked about this last time when Tanov was coming in, who does he play with? And when you look at, and, and, and Harley's going to get better in his own zone, you know, there's, there, there's, I mean, he's young, so there's still things and little position things and, um, that he's going to learn as he, you know, get, gets to those 250, 300 games, but those two defend with the puck, you know, they, they, they defend by not letting the other team touch it. You know, Miro does it. He transports the puck out of his own zone with his legs. Most times uh, Thomas is doing the same thing. Thomas makes really good passes too. They both do, you know, so uh, it, it's just your philosophy and how, how you want to put your pair together. And, you know, if you can keep those two guys, what's Thomas got 15, 15 goals now, or yeah, 16, 15. whatever yeah, it is. He's two um, away from tying the uh, uh, single season record for stars defenseman. Yeah. So, and again, I, I don't think you want to pencil him in every year for 15 to 20, but, um, but again, if he, you know, if that's what it's going to be, that, that would be consideration in his side of the camp when it comes to a contract, you know, how often can you get, you know, a defenseman that's getting close to 20 goals every yeah. year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, amazing so, development and change from the first time he came up and was with the club for a bit went down and then came back up just a, I don't want to say a different person, but I mean, there were differences both on and off the ice and he's just responded. That a lot of that has to do with the player. The, the, the first part of that player that, that they have to be able to handle is when they get up here, they play fairly well and then they get sent back down. And it's about what they do when they get sent back down, they go, you know what? I got to make these things a little bit quicker. I got to be in this area of the ice a little bit better, a little bit stronger. And they go there with that in mind. They don't go there and say, I don't belong here. I should be up there. They go there and they work on, you know, those little things. Then they come back and then you see what, how he came back. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> Dallas and, and Jim Neal have that history of, you know, they, they would like their players a little more overripe. Yes. Than, than the other way around when they bring Robertson, them from the minors. Uh, you know, so same. You know, yeah, yeah, if they want to spend a little more time down there, their 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 philosophy is that you know it, it pays off. Don't bring them up too soon. I mean, again, look at Stan Colvin and you know, so they they've been, you know, I, I there's always the exception to the rules, obviously, but I think they have a very good handle on, on the players. So let's stay defensively because let's shift you to both a defenseman and now a coach. How would you handle the situation with Tanif there now? Tanif can kill penalties. Um, You still have Yanni Hockenpah killing penalties as well. However, you have Nils Lundqvist sitting on the bench, and a lot of Stars fans are like, you know, saying it needs to be Lundqvist, not Hockenpah. I wanted to get your thought. Uh yeah, you know, my my thing there is and I think I think Nils has been really good this year. I, I think you could see the confidence, especially uh moving the puck, handling the puck, skating with the puck, uh more confident plays and passing. But it's that time of the year. You've got what 15 so games left somewhere in there, and 
he's going to get in the lineup in the playoffs as long as they, you know, make a long run because you're not going to generally, you don't just get in with 6D and, you know, there's, there's no injuries or something like that. I just look at, again, it's the attrition thing over the playoffs. You're playing the same team every other day for 14 days and you're going to get to know each other. They're going to know you and the games, as you move along in the playoffs, they get a little heavier and then a little heavier. And so versus a player that is six foot or five eleven, whatever Nils is, to a player that's six four and that has the ability <clears throat> to play a strong, heavy game in your own end. And and be and, and we've seen that from Hockenpah. He can he can be that guy. Um and when you've got some players on the other side, whoever you're playing against, and and he has that that assignment like lean on this guy. Like, let's just say if you're playing Vegas and it's Marcia soul and he's a little water bug, but when he gets in front of the net and when he gets in the corner and when you can make sure, you know, where the officials are, you lean on him and you make him pay and you find little ways to let him go and start crying to referees. Because when that happens, you know, you've done something right. And, you know, and again, who, who knows? And can you do it to McKinnon? You know, if you get against McKinnon, can can you do it to Shifley if you play Winnipeg? You know, who, who are you going to play in the first round? And, there, and there's going to be, you know, people that you have to identify. And and again, power plays and 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 goaltending, you know, again, they're, they're so important in the in the playoffs like they always are. And from his role, if he's playing on the penalty kill, that's where the good players are all the time. They're out there all the time. That's your opportunity to start. A little, little shot on the top of the foot, a little one on the ankle. Get, there's a little area there between the glove and the uh, elbow pad. You know, start making his wrist get sore. And and so is Nils going to do that? No, that's not his style. But I think Hawk and Pie, and I, and I only think that because Tanev will do that. Yeah. Um, Essa will do that. Um, Hawk and Pie can do that. Uh, I don't look at Miro or, or Harley really necessarily doing that, but you got you you have two to three guys back there that can make it uncomfortable for for other players when they get into playoffs, and I just think that's a big key, and maybe that's their their line of thinking. I mean, I think you kind of see it as as teams go along, and the closer you get to playoffs, and you get into that window before playoffs are going to start, and you're starting to go, this is our lineup. You know, these are these are the these are the 20 guys that we want in the lineup every night if we can, because this is how we want to play. Right. And, and you know, again, Pete, Pete DeBoer may have a different uh, idea and say, listen, we, we need a little more. We, I want more offense. Maybe that's where Nils comes in. I, I don't know. But I think that what we've seen from Lundquist so far is he's got a good head on his shoulders. And as much as he probably doesn't like not playing right now, he'll be ready when he's called upon. Well, Sean Shapiro and I talked about this. It's very rare to use just six defensemen in the playoffs as well. So, um, you know, you're going to see Lundqvist just like we saw Joel Hanley a lot last year um, in the playoffs. So there's going to be a rotation naturally. Uh, but thank you for your uh, uh, for your take on that. Um, wanted to ask you because, and this happened when you were playing, where you, like for instance, when you were in Montreal, you had to play your Adams division foe in the playoffs. So it was make it out of the Adams division first. And then they switched to this wild card format. And now they also switch. So it's, you know, you're still playing within your division, but just looking Craig with 14 to 16 games left, I have five teams in the Eastern conference that could end up as a potential wild card Four teams in the West. That's pretty impressive as far as what the NHL wants in that that's a lot of teams where fans can still hold up hope. If they're not in the playoffs, that's still a lot of teams that say, you know, if we just get a break here, like for instance, today Washington sits in the second spot in the wild card. Who would have thought Washington was going to be in the mix? Yeah. Thank you, Detroit. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when the Islanders have been scratching and clawing yep. and then now they went for a shit. So you know, but, but again, I, I, what I do and, and it's no, it doesn't, not the end all be all go, go down the column that, that tells you what your goal differential is. And, and I think Washington, I don't know if they're in the thirties, they, they could be minus 30 something or 20 something when it, when it's goals for goals against, 
I mean, generally the eight teams on, on each side that are going to make the playoffs, they're not in the red, they're in the green. And if you get a team that's going to get in there and it just tells you all year long, you have not been very good in your own end. And, and that doesn't really, you know, it doesn't go super far. So, um, you know, that, that that's kind of how I look at it. I think a lot of them are, are where they are right now. I think in the East, I think there's a good chance that, I don't know, Tampa always seems to find a way, you know what I mean? I, I think you can kind of write Tampa in there yep. when it, when, you know, when it comes to Washington, Detroit, the Islanders, I, I don't know if they're going to be there long, even if they make it. The, the one that I could see there being a little bit longer, like one of those teams would probably be the Islanders. They play more of a defensive style They've got a good goaltender. Yep. Um, they can be stingy, and those kind of teams can frustrate a good team, and that's what happens yeah. in the playoffs. Those kind of teams, to me, don't come out and all of a sudden just start scoring goals. They, they're going to be a team that understands, you know, we're not going to we're not going to beat whoever our opponent is in the first round. We're not going to beat them six to four. So we're we we've, we've got a way that we play, and so they're going to stick to it, and you know, and so that you know, if they frustrate a team in the in the first round, that could be it. As far as far as the West, I mean, Vancouver, Vancouver was, was Vancouver was good until they thought they made the blockbuster trade. You know, they got Lindholm and, and I mean, they had a really good team. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes as a GM, you just, you really got to go. I, I like our group. I don't know what another, you know, a high end player is going to do. Is it going to, is it going to screw up the chemistry? And, and I, you know, I'm not saying it, it screwed them, but, you know, they, they went through a spot there where they weren't, uh, they weren't as connected when they, when they would get in another good player, but <clears throat> I expect them, I think to be a good opponent in the playoffs. Yeah. They just, <laughs> they're, they're solid. So, and then, you know, when you got McDavid, you, you never know what's going to happen there. So it'll be interesting I, in the West, as far as yeah, wild card, I think the surprise for me in the wild card is Nashville. I absolutely you know? love their team. I just all of a sudden, right? Yeah. And all the talk, I don't know, a month before the deadline was you see going to keep them, going to trade them. Yep. You know, what are we going to do? It sounded like they were going to move them. And then all of a sudden he probably heard the chatter and said, uh, no, no, you know, and, and now he's just doing what he's doing and yeah. carrying that team along. So um, they've got a good goaltender and goaltending. It's the key. It's the key. Once you get in there, speaking of goaltending, Jake Ottinger, get it together. I mean, we'll see him this week, and uh, yeah, it was a tough game. I thought Pete DeBoer made the right move by uh, starting Wedgwood on Saturday um, because I say, because a lot of people would say, yeah, of course you'd play Wedgwood. However, Pete DeBoer has stated through the season that he believes that Jake Ottinger is one of the best um, goalies as far as uh, rebound games and stepping up when he has a bad game, and then all of a sudden, next game, he's terrific. So... Um, I give Pete DeBoer a lot of credit sitting down Ottinger and uh, we'll see how Ottinger plays this week. You got two games against Arizona, not an easy opponent by any stretch, um, but you should pick up points there. So I'm interested to see how he plays Wednesday night. Yeah, he's got a, I mean, he's going to be the starter in the playoffs. Uh, that's my opinion. Be. I mean, yeah. unless something just drastically falls apart, but um you know, we talked about this like a month ago and, you know, Jake should be in the top three to five goaltenders in the league. And I said, you know, there's just little things that seem a little off for him. There's that goal, that goal. That's not that goal for him. And, and I think I, I said at the time, I'm not worried about him, but you know, it's kind of, it's becoming more repetitive and just goals that we haven't seen go in on. Him. So again, young goalie, and, and you know he's he's getting time in with his goalie coach and all that other kind of stuff that they do and but just don't fool yourself and think that you know I, I was really good in the playoffs and when the playoffs come around I'm going to be really good which he hopefully he will but you know it's just you know he's got to you got to get he's got to get back to that to that form because again we we've seen <clears throat> from Dallas at times things can get a little loose in his own, in your own end. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so you're, you're going to need him to, uh, 
to, you know, take care of some of those coverage issues that will happen and, you know, things that we've talked about this year. So, um, you know, you, and, and if you want to play the way that Dallas wants to play and has success, you need that goalie because, you know, as good as Wedgwood's been, I mean, he has been good, but you know, there's, he's not Jake Ottinger when Jake Ottinger's on the top of his game. Yeah. And the other thing that's happened, Craig, in the last, I think two or three games is, We've seen a nice emergence from that fourth line as far as, you know, not just causing havoc in the zone and, you know, that's kind of their job, but at the same time, always nice when that fourth line gets some goals. Craig Smith uh, scoring a couple. Radic Fox has been really nice. Um, So, you know, I think Ty Delandry has really helped that line too. They really put their arms around an identity for a line. You know, they don't veer away from – they, they, you don't see them turning pucks over right in the neutral zone. You don't see them turning pucks over on the walls in their own zone. They, they know what they have to do to continue to get 10 to 12 minutes a night. And that is spend time at the other end of the rink. And if goals go in, awesome. If they don't, then we're going to just wear down whoever we're playing against. And then we're going to change at the right time. And we're going to get one of our top two lines out there against a line that's been out there for 45 seconds to a minute. And then our big boys score a goal because they end up in the offensive zone against a a line that we wore down a little bit. And not a lot of talk goes into that where broadcasters and, you know, but, but it will from coaches typically and say, you know, what led to that goal? It wasn't that pass from Robo. It wasn't the little chip up the wall from Pavelski it was our fourth line that went out there and played against that line for 30, 40, 50 seconds in their own zone and made it difficult for them in our zone. And then they came off at the right time and we got five fresh guys out there that are top, you know, offensive kind of guys. And we were able to take advantage of that. They understand that. Yeah. I'm interested to see when Sagan or Dodonoff comes back or both, how that will affect the lineup. It's interesting with Tyler, right? Because there was like, what, two weeks ago? Um, I was, we were actually in Phoenix for regionals. And <clears throat> Stan, who does some uh, little work with players and stuff like that when they're injured, his son had played for us a year ago. And he was in Phoenix. His little brother was on the U14 team, I think, there. And so he was watching and he plays in the USHL right now. But anyway, his dad, I said, your dad's not here. And he goes, no, Tyler's expecting to play on Tuesday. This was on Sunday morning. So um, they kind of were getting Tyler ready to come back and play, which I think, you know, everything was pointed in the right way. So I kind of expected to see Tyler already in the lineup. So hopefully whatever they're keeping him out for, maybe it's just not exactly where it should be right now. And, you know, they're, the, things are going fairly well for him. And, you know, you got another, you know, couple of weeks so that you can maybe get him back and get – five games under his belt or whatever it is and make sure he's as close to healthy as he can get them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, Craig. This was great. I appreciate the Madonna behind the scenes. That was terrific Intel. I wish you had called me. I would have bought you a frosty at hero. Um, but <laughs> They were free. Oh, <laughs> then I certainly would have bought. That's kind of the place you want to come to. Yeah. And buy me one. <laughs> You are tearing down my reputation every single time. It's like being that that whatever executive for the big radio stations that you're at the top of the mountain. Well, <laughs> not at the top of the mountain, but you can see the top of the mountain. Yeah, thanks, Craig. I appreciate it. <laughs> we're doing okay. We're, we're, do, we're doing okay. All right, my man. Well, have a great week. And uh, you're not on the road this week with the kids? No, our season is over. We lost that our last game in the championship game. We lost that one. That was our opportunity to get to uh national. So we're done. And, but around here, it, it doesn't, it's not long. So we'll be doing spring camps and all that other kind of stuff. So, all right. Exit meetings right now with your players, you know, all that, that fun stuff. Nice. Nice. Until but next time. Really. Yeah. yeah. What's next match game or who wants to be a millionaire? What's next? Well, it's 11 o'clock, so who wants to be a millionaire is over. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it's deal or no deal right now. I'm <laughs> looking at the back of Howie's bald head right now. <laughs>
Oh, for two-time Stanley Cup champion Craig Ludwig, I'm Gavin Spittle. Thank you so much for listening and supporting Spits and Suds. Thank you for the suggestions on the statue for Craig Ludwig. That was wonderful. And uh, thank you for uh, giving us the stars that you do when you rate us online and your comments and everything like that. Really appreciate uh, you growing the show. Despite what Craig says, I really enjoy doing the podcast. Oh, God, quit sucking up to everybody. (laughs) For Luds, I'm Gavin Spittle. Have a great day, everyone. 